when we chose donor 8898 we believed everything to be true on the donor profile i came to discover this donor went to a special needs high school he didn't speak until after three he did not have a clean bill of health ultimately my first son was diagnosed with autism for a while i would say thank god i only have one on the spectrum i couldn't handle two i used to say that the sperm bank was supposed to protect me they're in the business of helping create human life you would think that they would do it in an ethical manner that was Danielle who says the deceit, lies, and negligence she uncovered are unconscionable and it's hard not to agree. I want to bring in Danielle's consulting lawyer who is on the board of the donor sibling registry to help us understand the shortcomings of the sperm donor industry. Molly McCafferty in San Francisco now joins us. There are a lot of questions here. It's a multi-million dollar sperm donor industry how can this kind of mishap actually happen in an industry that's producing life? It's really like the wild, wild west. These sperm banks can have their own internal guidelines, but in terms of uniform federal regulations, there really are almost none. But there has to be someone who has some kind of oversight. Is there, there no one in state government, federal government, who they have to report to or who's supervising this? So the FDA does oversee sperm banks. Sperm banks have to register with the FDA. They're subject to FDA inspections, but by no means all states do regulate sperm banks. So the individual sperm banks really, in a way, because they're almost self-policing, they create their own kind of re requirements of donors, and they have to do their own background check and all their due diligence on the donors themselves, right? That's right. And in addition to that, they're relying on this voluntary self-reporting from the donors. So the sperm banks can say, we're going to ask these donors for their educational level, their height, their age, but they're relying on what these donors are telling them. So are they verifying the information? How do we know that the information the donors are providing to the sperm banks are accurate? That's another issue here. But Danielle, you say that your sperm bank actually did close down after many violations, many lawsuits, but you would you also would come to learn something really disturbing about what is called stock sperm? They closed down their sperm bank. Not only that, they sold everything to the sperm bank um, of New Jersey, the sperm and embryo bank of New Jersey, and they were still selling the sperm there. Even though they knew what was going on in my situation with my children, they closed, but then still sold that sperm. I mean, it just, it's, I don't know how they sleep at night. I mean, you know, Molly, you talk about ethical, there are ethical issues and there are legal issues. How does this sit with you legally? And, and, and even from a personal standpoint, uh, being someone who was conceived uh, from donor sperm. You know, legally, I see it becoming a bigger and bigger concern. We, we see the advent of the commercialization of home testing kits, you know, the 23andMe, the Ancestry.com. And we're really seeing an acceleration of litigation as more and more people are, are learning the realities of their identity. They're learning that they're donor conceived. And, you know, while it's uncomfortable for people to think of this as a product, it is a product and it's a commercialized industry and it needs to be regulated accordingly. We just recently saw a case out of the Georgia Supreme Court where um, that court told the family they can pursue a theory of consumer fraud against the sperm bank. Um, who for lying about the donors. So it'll be interesting to see the um, advent of all of this litigation and how it plays out. Well, Molly and Danielle, thank you so much for bringing attention to this very important topic. Thank you for giving a face and a voice to a very important cause. Thank you. All thank right. you. And for more information on the donor sibling registry, you can just go to our website, thedoctorstv.com.